welcome to Mrs. Bibb's Algebra 2 class, first nine weeks, week six. If you'll please fill in your table of contents. Complete all the slides of your warm-up. There are 20 questions that you have to complete. Check those answers. The next thing I'd like for you to do is to take out Student Journal 31. This is page 28 in your notebook. Turn to section 2.2 .2 in your textbook and fill in all of these definitions, please. On Student Journal 31, there's also this very nice summary of the section in which you have just looked at the definitions. I've highlighted the key things that you need to know from this section. First of all, I want to point out that this is standard form. It's very important that you know the difference between vertex form, standard form, and intercept form. But that is standard form. I believe you already know the fact that if your A value is positive, then the direction of your parabola is pointing up. And if your A value is negative, then that means you have a reflection across the x-axis and the direction is pointing down. So I believe you know that already, but it's a good thing to point out again. I do want to point this out as well. When you look at the absolute value of A, as the absolute value of A grows larger than 1, then your graph is more narrow than the parent function. Remember, this is your parent function. And as the absolute value of A is less than 1, meaning it's a fraction or a decimal, then your graph is wider than the parent function. Your parent function is what you always go back to. It's the beginning. I believe that's why it's called a parent function. It's very, very important for you to remember this formula in standard form. The formula for the axis of symmetry is x equals negative b over 2a. Once you find that negative b over 2a, you know the x coordinate of your vertex. So you know your axis of symmetry. And remember the axis of symmetry is what cuts that parabola in half. It's being symmetrical means that these two pieces of the curves are mirror images of one another. Same thing here. This axis of symmetry cuts this parabola in half. These two curves are reflections of one another. Once you know the x coordinate of your vertex, this is fancy notation here. To find the y coordinate, you just substitute the x coordinate into your standard form. Let's do some examples. These examples, if you'll please write under the section that says notes beneath this core concept part of Student Journal page 31, the, this is not written there, but if you'll please write this down, we're going to find the axis of symmetry, the vertex, the y-intercept, tell whether the graph goes up or down, and describe the appearance. I think I'll kind of work backwards. I'm going to start with up or down. I'm going to put D for direction. When I look at the A value, let's name them A. This is standard form AX squared plus BX plus C. A is 2. B is negative 5. I know it's negative 5 because I'm supposed to have plus B. I don't have plus B, so plus negative 5X. And C is 3. For the direction, it tells me to look at my A value. It points up when A is greater than 0 and down when A is less than 0. So what direction does this go? It goes up because A is 2 and that's greater than 0. If I want to describe the appearance of the graph, I have to analyze that A value again. Looking at the number 2, does that number 2 fit in this category? or this category. Is the absolute value of 2 greater than 1 or less than 1? 
it is greater than 1. That means that this graph here is more narrow than the parent function. And that's what I'm going to write, more narrow than the parent function. Let's do the y-intercept next. The y-intercept is C. So the y-intercept is 3. C is 3. Or it can also be written as an ordered pair, 0, 3. That means that parabola crosses the y-axis at 0, 3. Now, I want to find the axis of symmetry next, and I abbreviate that with AOS. The axis of symmetry, I'm going to use the formula x equals negative b over 2a. Please, please, please keep the x equals. This is an equation of a vertical line, therefore you need x equals this to actually have that equation of the line. So every time I keep that x equals, x equals negative b. So b is negative 5. Negative, negative 5 is positive 5 divided by 2 times 2. So x equals 5 fourths. That is my axis of symmetry. To find my vertex, right now I know the x-coordinate of my vertex. The x-coordinate is 5 fourths. I need to find the y-coordinate of my vertex. That means I'm going to substitute 5 fourths into this equation to find the y-coordinate. I'm going to substitute 5 fourths in for x. Next, I will use order of operations and take care of my exponents, 25 sixteenths. 5 fourths times 5 fourths. I will multiply 2 over 1 times 25 over 16 is 50 over 16. 5 over 1 times 5 over 4 is negative 25 over 4. Bring down my plus 3. The next thing I'm going to do to make it easier for me, to add and subtract fractions, I need a common denominator. So I'm going to go ahead and find the common denominator of 16, 4, and 1. And that common denominator would be 16. Sixteen times one gives me sixteen, so I keep that as fifty. Four times what gives me sixteen, creating equivalent fractions. Four times four is sixteen, so I'll multiply twenty-five by four. That gives me one hundred. One times what gives me sixteen? One times sixteen, so I'll multiply the numerator by sixteen. Three times sixteen is forty-eight. Next. I will combine these two. 50 sixteenths minus 100 sixteenths is negative 50 sixteenths. Bring down my plus 48 sixteenths. Negative 50 sixteenths plus 48 sixteenths is going to be negative 2 sixteenths. Can I reduce this fraction? Do they have a common factor? Yes, they are both divisible by 2. So my y-coordinate is negative 1 eighth. And that's the y-coordinate of the vertex, negative 1 eighth. So here's the answers to letter A. Next thing I'm going to do, and I'd like you to do also, I'm going to find the answers to letter B. I'm going to rewrite this first in descending order. A is negative 1, B is 4, 
and C is 12. I'll do each step and come back and show you what I get for the answers. First thing, I found the direction of this parabola. I find the direction by looking at my A value. Remember, it says when A is greater than zero, it opens up. When A is less than zero, it opens down. My A value is negative one. That's less than zero, so that means it opens down. I found the appearance of the graph by analyzing my A value. A is negative one. Here, highlighted in yellow, at the very top of your screen you can see, when the absolute value of A is greater than one, so the absolute value of A would be one, absolute value of negative one would be one, is one greater than one, or is one less than one, or is one equal to one, and it does not say that here. Well, one is equal to one, so that means that the graph of this function is neither more narrow or wider than the parent function. It is the same size as the parent function. When your A value, the absolute value of A, is one, that means it's the same size of the parent function. The next thing I found is the y-intercept. The y-intercept is the C value. C is 12, so that means that my parabola intersects the x-axis at 0, 12. I used the formula x equals negative b over 2a, substituted 4 in for b. The opposite of 4, or negative 4, would be negative 4, over 2 times a. a is negative 1. I did order of operations and multiplied first. Then I divided negative 4 by negative 2 and got x equals 2. Remember, include the x when you're saying what the axis of symmetry is. x equals 2. I'll find the vertex next. To find the vertex, I know the x coordinate of the vertex from the axis of symmetry value. So x is 2. Now to find the y value, I will substitute 2 into this original function. I substituted 2 into every spot there was an x. This is negative 1 times x squared plus 4 times x plus 12. So negative 2 squared plus 4 times 2 plus 12. Negative 1 times 4, this 4 came from doing my exponent first, and I brought everything else down. Next I multiplied negative 1 times 4, 4 times 2. Then I combine like terms, negative 4 plus 8 is 4, then 4 plus 16 is 20. So the vertex for this parabola is 220.